Okay, so welcome back. We're now going to be working on the start of the game. I've made a start game file and copied over everything from game setup over into the start game file. And I've listed out some comments here on the sections that we're going to work on now. We have the start of the game, which is going to be placing the bets, shuffling cards, dealing cards, dealing with the initial values of the cards, dealing with the initial dealing of cards, and then assigning the values and checking for blackjack. So everything above this line here is in the previous video, and here we're going to go ahead and get started. So right now, on the start of the game, we're going to work on placing bets. So we're going to do a bet loop, and this is just going to make sure that if they enter an invalid bet, that we can handle it. So we're going to do bet loop is yes, while bet loop is equal to yes. User bet string. This is going to be an input that asks uh, how much would you like to bet? And then because they're going to enter a number, we're going to want to handle it as a number. So we're going to do user bet is equal to an integer conversion of user bet string. Great. So then we're going to check if user bet is greater than player money. Remember, player money was what we used to keep track of the player money. So if they're betting more than they have, we needed to tell them print uh, bet amount to high. You only have. And then we're going to do a dollar sign. We're going to make this an f string literal so we can print out a variable amount. And here we're going to do player money, try again. So this will tell them, hey, this is how much money you have and you're betting too much money. And so it will then, uh, and then we're going to, uh, it will then bring you back to the beginning of the while loop if they're betting too much money. Then we do else and we're going to do player money with minus equals user bet. This will subtract the amount of money that they bet from their money. And then we're going to tell them print bet place of, and then we're going to want an F string literal here again, so we can tell them how much they bet. User bet. Good luck. Great. And then here we're going to want to exit out of the while loop because they've input a valid amount for the bet. So we're going to do bet loop is equal to no. Great. All right. <clears throat> so this will keep track of the bet loop and to make sure that they're betting about the amount of money. Now let's move on to shuffling the cards. So uh, we're going to create a new deck object called active deck and we're going to set it equal to deck list and we're going to put an empty colon there. It will start at the very first element and end the very last element. That will capture all the elements in deck list. And then we're going to do a couple of shuffles. We're going to do shuffle times is equal to zero. And my understanding is that in real life, if you shuffle seven times, then you get the best chance of a random distribution of cards. So we're going to tell it to shuffle seven times. So we're going to do while shuffle times is less than seven. Remember, we're starting at zero. So seven, having an upper limit of seven non-inclusive means that it will shuffle while it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's seven times. And then we're going to need to import a new library. Let's put all of our import statements at the top. Import random, which will give us random numbers. And while shuffle times less than seven, we're going to do random dot shuffle. We're going to do active deck, and that will shuffle our random deck. And then we're going to do shuffle times plus equals one. Iterate it up each time. That way it will shuffle seven times. And after it's done shuffling several, seven times, we can move on to the next step, which is dealing our cards. So in order to deal cards, we're going to want to set up our initial values. We're going to create a couple of variables here, starting with player card list is a list, and that will have all of the cards that the player has, and then player card values is equal to an empty integer object because we want to keep an integer 
let's do value, it's going to be one value that's the sum of all the cards that um, they have. And in fact, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's set it as an uh, empty integer object. And then we're going to do the same thing for a dealer card list. It's a list and dealer card value is equal to an int. Great. So we've got the initial card list for the player and the dealer, as well as the initial card value for the player and the dealer. Now let's go ahead and do the initial deal. I've set up a function here, define function. The function is named deal card, and it takes the arguments card list and the deck. The card list will be the card list that we'd like to deal a card to, and the deck is what deck we're going to use to deal the card. So let's start with <coughs> card list, and that's going to take whatever card list we pass through here, and it's going to append and we're going to do deck using the deck that we told it to dot pop zero. The pop method will take a single item out of that list. It will delete it from the original list and it will add it to the end of the card list that we pass. So this will, starting with the deck that we pass in, it will take a card out and it will append it to the end of whatever card list we told it to. We use zero to use the very first positional element in whatever deck we're using. So I'll take the first card in the list and add it to whatever card list we tell it. Um, so we're going to use this many times. Uh, dealing cards is something that will happen an indeterminate amount of times, at least four times, because we need two cards for the player, two cards for the dealer. But the player might hit, the dealer might hit, and so we might need to deal cards more later. That's why we're going to use a function to handle that. Now, to do our initial deal, we're going to do deal, we're going to call that function deal card, and we're going to pass in both arguments, the, the card list and the deck. So we're going to first deal a card to player card list from active deck, and then we're going to do that again because we want to do two cards for the player list, and then we're going to do deal card dealer card list from the active deck and we're going to do that twice as well. That way player gets two cards, dealer gets two cards. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to assign the values to each of the uh, hands because we have cards for each person but now we need to check what value they're at. That will help for determining the initial values, determining if there's blackjack, so let's go ahead and write that function out. And again, this determining what value your hand is at is going to be something where I do multiple times. That's why we're going to define a function called assign card values. And it's going to take in just a card list. That's because we just want to look at a list of cards and determine what is the value of the complete list. So let's start by uh, making an index num is equal to zero. That's going to be the variable we use to go through all of the cards that are in the card list. And then we're going to do card value is equal to zero. That's the variable we're going to use to keep track of the total of the cards that we have. And now while index num is less than length of card list, and that'll keep track of while our index number is incrementing, we want to use that index to count through all of the cards in the card list. And we're going to, and remember that the length of the card list, right now, this player card list is a length of two. So we want it to be, to use index number zero and index number one, but if we go to index number two, that's too many cards. And so this will be flexible for when you have more cards, but right now it's going to be set, it's going to stop at two because there's only two cards in each hand. So let's do this. Uh, let's set a variable card to check, and that's going to get... Uh, card list index num and so that will check the card list check the card from the card list we pass in it will check the card at index number starting with zero but it will loop through and then what we want to do is we want to just get the number we don't care about the suit here we just want the number so keep in mind that our cards were generated in a way that the suit is the first 
uh, item in the string, the very first index in the string is the suit, and then everything afterwards is the number of the card. And so we want to do one colon. That will start with the second letter in the string that is located at card index index num. So just to kind of give an example, a card might be, you might have a hand of heart 5 and club 10. So we don't want this heart and club. So this card right here, in the, uh, card list index num and then a zero would be the heart. And so we want everything afterwards starting with the one till the end. Here we want to start with the one and go to the end to get the whole number. So we're going to use, assign this to whatever card we want to check. And then we're going to start running through and make sure that face cards are handled well first. So we're going to do if card to check uh, is in card num ref from 10 on. Now let's, why do we do this? Card num ref from 10 on. Well, card num ref is our initial list of uh, card numbers. And this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 10, this is 11, and this is 12. So card num 10 till the end would give us jack, queen, or king. Jack, queen, and king are all equal to 10 in blackjack. So all of these cards, jack, queen, or king, let's make a comment here, handling for jack, queen, and king. If card to check is in card number F10 on, then we want card value to increment by 10. Else if, so this is another if statement, if this is not true, let's evaluate if this is true. Else if card to check is equal to ace, well an ace is worth 1 or 10, we're going to handle that in an interesting way. We're going to start off by doing card value plus equal to 11, and then later on we're going to do an else statement and we're going to but later on, we're going to adjust for the ace. Uh, right now, uh, let's talk about the else. Uh, if it's not an ace and it's not a jack, queen, or king, then what we can do is card value is incremented by the amount of integer card to check. So for, for uh, let's do a comment here, handling ace. And then this is um, handling number of cards. If the card to check is a 2 through 10, we can just convert it to an integer and then add it to the card value. So what about aces? Now keep in mind that aces are worth 10 or, or sorry, 11 or 1, depending on the player's choice. Uh, and that's to keep from busting if you have an ace. So what we're going to do here is if card value is greater than 21 and ace is in card list, then card value minus equal to 10. And then after doing all of this stuff, we're going to want to increment our index number by one. That way it'll go through each individual card list, card in the card number, card list by one. So it starts with card in index number zero, then it goes to card in index number one, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Once that while loop is done, we're going to want to return card value. That way, when we run this function, we can assign whatever the card value is of the hand to whatever variable we like. So that handles our card values, and we'll talk about how we're going to use that in a second. <clears throat> Let's move on to assigning the card names. 
This is a function that we're going to use so that we can print out a pretty version of what cards each player has. So again, it's going to take in the list of cards that we want to pass in, whether it's the player list or the dealer's list, and it's going to be called assign card names. Start off by making card names as a list, and then we're going to make a dictionary that will keep track of what our short codes for suits means. Here, remember, we used card suits of D, C, H, and S, but I want to be able to expand it out to diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades so that the player, it's a little bit clearer for them what they have. So here, we're going to do a suit rep dict, and keep in mind, we're doing this locally inside this function because we don't need to use these suit references outside of this function. This is the only place where we're going to handle this. So we're going to make a dictionary and we're going to just quickly type it out to D is for diamonds, C is for clubs, H is for hearts, whoops, let's make that a string, and S is for spades. Um, Keep in mind, dictionaries are not ordered, so anytime it finds a D, it will assign it to diamond C for clubs, such and so forth. So now let's do the same thing here, where we had a loop through the indexes of the cards. We're going to do current card is equal to zero. Um, that's going to be the index for our current card. And then while current card is less than length of card list, looks very similar to up here, less than length of card list, whoops, less than length of card list, and then we're going to do card names string is equal to a string, we're going to make an empty string variable, and then we're going to do card, and this is going to be for, all, uh, for the current card that we're working on. Um, <clears throat> card names string, and we're going to add on the current card name by doing f, and then we're, we're going to f string literal so that we can put in the variable. We're going to do card list index current card, and we're going to do the number first, so one on, that way we get the number, and then we're going to do of, so that it does the, like, the five of clubs, the ten of clubs, for example. So we've got the current card, the number, of, and then a space, and then we're going to do card names, string, we're going to add on suit rep dictionary, and we're going to get the index or we're going to try and get the letter of the suit from our card list. So we're going to do, again, card list index current card. And then instead of doing one onwards, we're going to do up to one. And that will just get the very first uh, letter in the string that is the card that we're working on. Um, and so that way it will do the number and then of, and then it will add on the suit that we're working in. And then we're going to do card names list. Sorry, card names is equal. Uh, and then we're going to append because we want to add on to the list of card names that we have. And we're going to do card names string. That way, once we get our little string that's five of clubs, six of diamonds, we're going to add it to our card names list that we created up there. And then once this while loop is done, it's gone through every single card we have, we just need to return, return card names. Great. So this function will assign our card names. This function will assign the value of the hand. Let's go ahead and move on to, excuse me, let's assign our card names to our hand. So we're going to do player card. Let's let's uh let's start with our card values and then our card names. So player card value is equal to assign card values 
player card list. And then that will call our function assign card values, which is defined here, and it will pass through the player card list and it will assign that whatever value it gets to player card value. And then let's do the same thing for dealer card value is equal to assign card values dealer card list. Great, that will assign our card values. Now let's do our assigning of card names. Player card names is equal to assign card names player card list. Now that we've created our player card names list, we're going to want to, uh, uh, let's go ahead and do dealer card names. Dealer card names is equal to assign card names dealer card list. Great. So now that we have our player card values and our dealer card value, our player card names and our dealer card names, let's go ahead and tell the player what they have and then what one card is showing. Keep in mind in Blackjack, the player can see both of their cards, but can only see one of the cards that the dealer has. So let's go ahead and print out um, player has, and then so that we can print out what they have, let's make an F string literal. Player has player card value. That will tell the player what their total is. And then we're gonna do a colon, and then let's go ahead and print out the strings for each of the card names. Remember, assign card names returns a list of card names. And so player card names is a list object. So we're going to want to print out the first card and the second card that the player has. At this point in the game, the player only has two cards because they haven't decided to hit or stay yet. So we can know for a fact this is only going to want to return two cards. So let's do player card names index zero, that's the first card, and, whoops, oh, whoopsie, is this, okay, there we go, uh, this is our variable player card name zero, and player card names index one, that will print out the first card that they have and the second card that they have, great. Now we want to print out what the dealer has. Print, again, F string literal. Dealer shows, because they're only showing one card. Let's do uh, dealer card list. And let's do dealer card list zero. That'll give the first card. But again, we'll, we want to show them the num. Just like in here, player has this value. Player card name zero and player card name one. So let's show the first card, but let's only show the value. That way it mirrors the way that we set it up for the player. And then a colon, and then dealer card names zero. That will show the actual name of the card, whereas this will only show the dealer card list. This is the number of the card that they have. So it'll show the player's value and the dealer's value before the colons, and then it shows the two player cards and then just the one dealer card. Great. So now that we've told the player what cards they have and what card the dealer has, we need to check for blackjacks. Before any action is taken by the player, we need to check for blackjacks. So I have this function here, check blackjack. We don't have any arguments in here. What we're going to do is if player card value is equal to 21, and then move on, right? No because we have multiple options here. We have four options of what could happen for blackjacks. The player gets the blackjack and the dealer doesn't. The dealer gets the blackjack and the player doesn't. Both the player and the blackjack and the dealer get blackjack or nobody gets blackjack. That's four options. So our first option is player gets blackjack, 21, and dealer card value is not equal to 21. That's just the player gets blackjack. We're going to return player blackjack. Great. Now, else if, and remember we have to use else if here because we want it to only give one of the four options. We can't get multiple options. Um, so here we want else if player card value is not equal to 21 and dealer card 
card value is equal to 21, return dealer blackjack. Else if player card value is equal to dealer card value and player card value is equal to 21, this will check to see if, if player and dealer both have 21 because in that instance player will have 21 and player card and dealer card values will be exactly the same. Return double blackjack. Oops, this should be a lowercase j. Great. And then else, this is everything other than these three scenarios. Return no blackjack. So this is our full function for checking for whether or not there is a blackjack on one or both uh, players. <clears throat> so now that we have this function defined, we want to call this function um, check blackjack. And remember, it's going to return something. So we want to do blackjack check is equal to check blackjack and then print blackjack check. That way it will tell the player whether one or both players have gotten blackjack. And then let's do some handling for that to make sure that we can adjust uh, the, the numbers uh, uh, accordingly. If the player gets blackjack and the dealer doesn't, then the player gets paid 1.5 times their bet. Uh, but remember, we already subtracted the player's bet from their money, so they're gonna get their bet back plus 1.5 times, which will mean that we need to do give the player 2.5 times their money. So let's do that. If blackjack check is equal to player blackjack, then player money add and then 2.5 times user bet. Elif blackjack check is equal to dealer black jack colon and we're just gonna pass here because if the dealer gets blackjack then the player loses but we've already subtracted the user bet from the player money so nothing more will happen the player doesn't pay extra money when a dealer gets blackjack he just loses the bet that he's already lost so nothing is going to happen if that happens and then we can do um, elif blackjack check is equal to double blackjack then what we want to do is give the player back the money that they bet but nothing additionally <clears throat> that's how we're going to handle it for this so we're going to do player money add user bet and then we can do else and pass because again if it's no blackjack that will be covered in this else statement and then we can just pass because nothing will happen we need to continue on to play the game great so this covers everything that we've set out to do we have shuffling the deck we have starting the game so placing the bets we have shuffling the cards we have dealing the cards by setting up the values uh, doing the initial deal using the deal card function we created and then we create assigned card values and assigned card names and then we've assigned the card values and the card names to each player then we've shown the player what cards they have uh, we've created our check blackjack function and then we've called it to check to see if there's any blackjacks and then we've uh, added in code that will handle whether and if there is a blackjack for one or both users then uh, we will handle that by adjusting the bets accordingly. I look forward to continuing on with the next section. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we have our game setup file here and we have our start of game. Uh, I've made a copy and called it player and dealer turns. So this file has all of our game setup stuff 
and then the start of game code that we just created in our last section. Before I move on, I want to make a quick side note here and mention in this define assign card values file, I mentioned that for handling of the aces, uh, if card value is greater than 21 and ace in card list, card value reduced by 10. Well, one thing I thought about after recording this video was just that if you have your first card is an ace uh, and it would cause you to bust, for example, let's say you have two aces. Well, the first card uh, might w cause you to bust, well, the first card would give you an 11 and that'd be fine. The next ace you have would give you a 22 and that would use this statement to reduce it by 10. But then if you get another 10 and that would bring you up to 22 again, it would reduce you again. And then you get another 10 and that would reduce you by 10 again. This continues to reduce by 10 every time you get a new card if there is an ace in the card list. So what we want to do is change this ace in card list to uh, and card to check is equal to ace. That means that it will only apply this fix if it's currently working on an ace. The next card that you get will not be reduced by 10 automatically if you're uh, getting an ace. So this is a simple way of working around handling ace cards for now. Um, I'll give you guys another update if I find a better way to handle ace cards that might be simpler, but just wanted to throw that out as a quick uh, correction on what I'm working on here. Another thing that we talked about is earlier here we did, we created a list for player card list and then an integer for player card value and same for the dealers. The reason why we created them up here is because in the deal card function we need player card list to be an actively defined list. However, when looking at uh, PyCharm, it was giving a little bit of an error because player card value is being declared and assigned here, uh, but it's not being used for this declaration, which means that we don't actually have to declare it as an integer here and, or declare this an integer. We need to declare the lists before we use them, so we have to create these declarations, but the integer declarations were redundant. And now when we go look at player card value here, uh, we're no longer getting that error. So just wanted to point that out real quick. The other errors that you might see down here on the side are about not enough blank lines after function declarations, which is just a quick fix. Um, so not really worth discussing. So with those quick fixes out of the way, we can go ahead and move on to the next section, which will be talking about the player and dealer turns.